Hey YouTube, this video is going to talk about educational reform in the United States, though you could apply the same concepts elsewhere as well. The background footage is mostly a Titanfall match. Now there are many different issues plaguing our educational system, up to and including what I would call entities that have the goal of keeping the population ignorant. But in this video I'd like to specifically address overarching goals and how we teach mathematics. The problem with goals is one that many other critics of our educational system have mentioned before, and I posted links in the description box for anyone interested. But the punchline is that here in the United States, our schools usually have either outdated goals or no goals at all. Many mission statements for public schools will talk about preparing students for the 21st century, but there's generally no clarification as to what that is or means. As pointed out by others who have more qualifications in the subject than I do, the real mission statements would often be something along the lines of passing SATs or some similar objective, which has no focus on provision of real education. They're also outdated in the sense that students are grouped based on age, and often take classes redundant to actual life in the 21st century, largely because our educational system still functions on a model from the 1800s. But how can we address this problem? It's pointless to sit around and criticize with no alternative suggested. In my case, I've had to create my own political outlook due to most of the more well-known parties not having a close enough agenda for me to jump on board with. So the first thing I would need to do to address this problem is establish what the educational system is and what its goals should be. So this video, in part, is about how my meritocracy party would go about tackling the situation. I see a country's educational system as responsible for the production of citizens, and within my political outlook, citizens need to have certain qualifications, because a citizen has various responsibilities. Thus, the job of the public school system is to train people from a young age to be prepared for when these responsibilities are placed on them once they reach adulthood, and these responsibilities are, in most cases, specific and quantifiable. One of these responsibilities is to have economic utility, by which I mean be able to get a job and manage your income and resources responsibly. Now, does the current American educational system do this? No. In fact, even having qualifications isn't certain to get you a job anymore. And this brings up the point about class redundancy, because we don't teach much about economics or currency in the United States. We teach a lot of things, but many of these things are useless to the average person. To provide an anecdote for the purpose of example, I myself had to take four years of Spanish. The first two years were in middle school and the second were in high school, at which point I found that the high school used the same first and second year Spanish books that my middle school had used. I found that what was being required of me was to retake year one Spanish and year two Spanish as a result of school bureaucracy, despite having already passed both classes. When I brought this up to the authority figures, their reply was to tell me that I shouldn't complain because if I took them already, I should pass the classes easily. This same scenario also happened in another class with another reused book. That is not a way to encourage students to invest hours each week to come to class, pay attention, and do their homework. That is telling them that they're wasting their time, and many classes that we require students to take function in this manner. The reason for that is because we're still training 1800s factory workers. At that time, gripping students based on age was a good idea, and they needed to be able to read and have basic math skills for the purpose of factory labor. For that task, our educational system does quite nicely. However, the current year is 2014, not 1800, and continuing to produce 1800s workers is having a negative impact on our economy. And this in turn brings me to the point about how we teach mathematics. Information that is conveyed to students in a manner that is either useless or appears to be useless doesn't incentivize a willingness to learn, and for a lot of students, mathematics is one such category. I was told in my first two years of high school that the algebra I was being taught would be needed to pass my business classes later, which at the time I thought was a lie, and I was right. When I went on to getting my business degree, I used nothing that I had learned in high school, and nearly all the skills I did use I had developed myself, which in turn made me struggle because I had made different names for things and I had referred to insourcing as in-housing. Lying to students repeatedly only further impedes their academic progress. Most of what I was told to keep me in class was simply not true, and the honest answer, because bureaucracy, is not much more of an indication that the time is well spent. As an alternative, I would suggest that students who can see practical value in the information would be more willing to learn. I would propose that not only do we need to rearrange what classes we teach, but also how we teach certain material. Most people in the United States don't learn how to balance a checkbook as part of their general education or how to make a bank statement. We don't teach teenagers about being in a job interview or planning for the rent on their apartment for when they're not living with their parents anymore. We don't teach people about interest on a house mortgage or credit card management or how to read, interpret, and prepare necessary financial documents. These are skills that nearly everyone needs, but few people learn before they're in their 20s or even learn at all. I would propose that we teach mathematics through the practical applications of math, clearly demonstrating how the information will be useful to the student. And if it can't be demonstrated that it'll be useful, then perhaps we need to rethink how we're teaching the material, or if the material should be compulsory in the first place. 
Consequently, I would, barring the separate issue of requiring some electives of a pool be taken for job preparations or similar reasons, suggest that only classes that are actually part of the requirements a citizen needs to have be made mandatory. Most handling of finances that people will do in today's society will involve basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And when looking over financial documents, you'll need to work multiple problems and derive meaning from how they interact. Nearly everything most people will have done in high school will have no application at all. Since financial and economic skills are needed by the average person and useful in everyday life, I would suggest that for our core math classes, instead of handing students worksheet tests, we make our exams focus on measuring progress towards development of their needed skills. A test could be balancing a checkbook or preparing a bank statement, and an essay could be done where the student is asked to review a month of income, and their job is to make recommendations based on expenses for rent, food, etc. We should teach them what inflation is and what the economy is and how it functions, and how things like inflation affect them. Everyone's going to need to balance a checkbook eventually, so how about we do that instead of giving students a worksheet that has bland problems with no obvious purpose? One idea I came up with was an economics program using classroom money that would last about a month, where students actively learned about inflation from changing prices for items and how to plan for things and manage their income. And as for more advanced math classes, I would propose that we make them electives for those that have an interest in career paths they would be useful in. Obviously, I'm not suggesting that we cut things like algebra out entirely. I'm just using finance classes as an example for this video, to which most algebra has little relevance. What I'm proposing is that we teach important math skills via practical application, and those that have no practical application to the requirements of a citizen become electives for those with an interest in a relevant career path. It'd be much more cost-effective to have job introduction and career programs to help people decide what they want to do to get them to take trigonometry willingly of their own accord than it would be to make trigonometry mandatory for all students, most of whom will never use it. Now, of course, various upgrades to the quality of education would require additional funding for education, something my policies are very much in favor of. See my position of legalizing and taxing marijuana for an example. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you found it most enjoyable. Additional resources are in the description box for those interested, and for those so inclined as to participate in a daily discussion, post your ideas for projects that could be useful for the education of students in the comments section below. And I'll see you next time. Later, YouTube.